Okay, welcome back. So I want to apply now these ideas that we've been talking about, describing visual representations of data. Okay, so we're going to look at this histogram that we've seen before, this high temperatures histogram. All right, so we're finally going to, we finally have all of the terminology in place to really describe this. Okay, so what do we see here? Well, remember, whenever we're trying to describe a distribution, just think socks. All right, so socks starts with shape. We always want to start with shape. So what does our shape look like? Looks fairly symmetric. Again, you might you might argue that we might have a little bit of right skewness here, but I think overall it looks symmetric. Definitely looks unimodal and, and fairly bell-shaped. Okay, so moving down the list, outliers. We thought we might have something going on here with the potential outlier. We'll nail that down in the future with numerical methods. Just eyeballing our center. Our center is probably somewhere between 110 and 115. Call it about 114. Right? We're just getting a rough estimate right now. And for spread, visually our range appears to be, we're going from about 100 to about 135. About 35. All right. If I hit all of those aspects in that acronym SOX, I should be in good shape. So let's think about some more examples using this terminology. All right, I'm going to kind of throw out some hypothetical situations and let's think about what these distributions would look like. So what if you were to go around and graph the GPA of a bunch of students? All right, so think about what, what you think that would look like. And I'll kind of draw what I'm thinking here. Right, so so GPAs, let's just say it goes on a scale of 4.0 from 0 to 4. You know, most people, so so mo a lot of schools, you know, have a have a cutoff. If you're below two, you're you're probably not gonna be hanging around too long. Right, but most students, you know, are probably somewhere somewhere up here, a little above a three. Start to see things go down a little bit, and then not very many students over here with, with really low GPAs, hopefully. All right, so, so I think something like this would probably be left skewed. All right, what about people's SAT scores? Your SAT score is supposed to be somehow a, a reflection of your intelligence, right? Things like intelligence, height, weight, most aspects dealing with people, humans, plants, in nature, tend to be fairly bell-shaped, fairly symmetric, unimodal, bell-shaped. All right, so I would guess that SAT scores should look about like this. All right, what if you were to take a bunch of students and just sample the last digit of their social security number? What do you think that would look like? Well, we would have you know, all of our options from 0 to 9. But I don't see any reason why if you sampled enough people that you'd be more likely to get 9s than 8s or than zeros and so on. Right, so I think this would give us a fairly uniform shape. Should be pretty symmetric. Finally, what about income of people here in our country? Well, first let's let's define how we might graph this. Right, so say my graph, I have um, frequency on my y-axis, right, and I have on my x-axis the amount of money people make so what would that look like well most people hopefully don't make zero dollars but what's the me median earner in the country makes what like fifty five thousand something like that so you'd probably see something like this but then of course we have our 
professional athletes, big earners, millionaires, billionaires, are Jeff Bezos of the world, right, that are making a ton, a ton of money. It's extremely, extremely right skewed. We probably can't even conceptualize how right skewed he is. All right, so this is a good exercise because it kind of helps you think through what do these shapes look like, what would I expect them to look like, and maybe you could follow up on some of these things and see, okay, what is the data actually telling me? Does it look like what we expected them to turn out? All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.